whatever she decides next. Has the ability to impact an entire country. In ways no one could ever imagine. Buying Team Namibia is a choice you make for us, not just for you. Join the 2.5 million strong team that grows stronger with every single Team Namibia purchase. Team Namibia, together our future is brighter. A very good evening and thank you for joining us this Friday evening on Primetime News. I'm Salima Shumwefeleni Masipa, here to guide you through tonight's headlines. Before we delve into our lead story, we would like to extend an apology for an error in Thursday's bulletin. We inadvertently aired an insert that did not align with the introduction in last night's report about the concerns raised by the Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula, regarding the increase in maternal deaths, stillbirths and neonatal deaths in Namibia. Primetime News sincerely apologizes for any confusion caused by this error. Now in our lead story, we bring you a portion of Dr. Shangula's insert regarding the rise in maternal deaths, stillbirths and neonatal deaths in Namibia. The 2022 report into the maternal death, stillbirth and neonatal death for the period 1st of April 2018 to the 31st of March 2022, which was commissioned by the Ministry, reveals among others Park. A total of 145 maternal deaths were reported to the ministry. In light of the possibility of underreporting, the executive number might be higher. A total of 1,066 stillbirths and 1,069 neonatal deaths were reported, while through the health information system of the ministry, 4,406 stillbirths and 2,572 neonatal deaths were captured. And there were 298 maternal near misses in Namibia. In this context, near misses means women who nearly die but survive the pregnancy related complications. Two Tanzanian men aged 21 and 22 are said to appear in Ketmanswap Magistrates Court on Monday following their alleged possession of cannabis valued at over 1 million Namibian dollars. Namibian Police Force Crime Investigations Coordinator Ford Karas, Deputy Commissioner Nicodemus Mbango, informed Primetime News on Thursday that the duo was apprehended through a police intelligence-led operation at approximately 34 minutes past one on Thursday, located 51 kilometers along the grunau kietmanswap Road. They face charges after being found with 22 kilograms of cannabis with a street value of 1.1 million Namibian dollars. Now we shift our focus to the Erongo region where the Chief Executive Officer of the Road Authority, Conrad Lutombi, has expressed concern about the increasing incidence of dealing and usage of fake driver's licenses and vehicle license discs in recent times. During the launch of the festive season road safety campaign in Swakopmund earlier today, Lutombi emphasized that law enforcers are prepared and equipped to prevent this trend, particularly during the upcoming festive season. The CEO cautioned drivers to ensure that their licenses and vehicles are in order to avoid accidents or other consequences. This 
the festive season, we are going to deploy our traffic law enforcement officials in terms of the transport inspectors who will be equipped with speed cameras, alcohol screening devices, and they will be deployed on B1 and B2 rules to conduct highway patrols, assisting the Namibian police, and also doing ad hoc road traffic checkpoints, especially focusing on commercial vehicles, especially those carrying uh, passengers. We will also be doing some cross-border road transportation enforcement in terms of enforcing permits. It came to our attention and we are very grateful that the Minister of Transport is here as well as our very capable uh, Inspector General. It has come to our attention that there are people who are dealing in fake driver licenses disc as well as in fake driver licenses. We want to warn that we have equipped our officials with special instruments to be able to detect any fake licenses disc as well as fake driver licenses. So we want to caution the road users. Speaking at the same occasion, the Inspector General of the Namibian Police Force, Lieutenant General Joseph Shikongo, reassured Namibians and visitors that despite Namibia's recent decline in the ranking of safest countries, law enforcement is committed to protecting citizens and visitors across the country. The Inspector General responded to a recent article published in a local newspaper stating that Namibia was ranked by the global polling group Gallup as one of the worst countries in terms of law and order. In the latest poll results based on interviews from over 140 countries and areas in 2022, Namibia received an overall law and order score of 62, a decrease from last year's 65, placing it as the 11th worst country in the world for law and order. And they said there was in India, there was a survey interviewing about 140 countries or um, people in, in a number of countries. Uh, and of course we are rated, we drop from 65% to 62% uh, over 2022. 2020, and uh, today he is just to reassure our people in the nation that the Namibian police will definitely improve on the index to ensure the public safety and public security. And I think the world should not only look to the number of incidents involving tourists, because we as a national police, we wanted to cover the overall picture of the security and safety of our nation. No matter you are from wherever you come from, find yourself in Namibia, you should feel safer. Because if you look to the bigger picture, we have our communities that are living in the, in, in, in suburb or in informal settlement that are also terrorized every day. And I think it's a question of all of us to come together. Because our minister always say, when I talk about the criminals, are not the people that are living somewhere else. They are living within our community. They are living within our houses. If we take a decision today that whoever is harboring a criminal in his or her house, make a decision. These people, they should get out. We support these people that are committing crimes. We pay for their school. We, we feed them. And yet we are complaining about increasing crimes, that the crime is committed within our community. The mandate of the Ambient Police is very clear. We are there to ensure that preservation of Indian security of our republic, maintenance of law and order, investigation of offense or alleged offense. Then we are talking about pre prevention of crime, and then from the protection of life and property. And it is something what that means that we are going to do without the favor or fear. So therefore, the Namibian police and, and other stakeholders in, in, in law enforcement, we are ready to be on the ground. And I would like to take an example of Honorable Governor of the wrong region, Neville, who led the operation. Stay tuned for our upcoming primetime business segment.
Welcome to Primetime Biz, your premier source for all things business. In a noteworthy move towards advancing digital learning, Minister of Education, Arts and Culture, Anangi Pondoka, recently revealed ambitious plans to allocate 30 million Namibian dollars for ICT hardware and software. The initiative aligns with the National Education Conference implementation plans aiming to enhance access to universal and inclusive digital learning experiences across Namibia. Our producer Petrus Namadiko was present at the briefing and brings us this insert. The Ministry of Education has set aside an estimated budget of 750,000 Namibian dollars per lap for 42 schools ensuring the purchase of fixed computers. This initiative will see the establishment of three computer labs per region, equipping educational institutions with essential resources for modern teaching and learning. In addition to the computer labs, an extra budget of 3.2 million Namibian dollars has been allocated for the procurement of smart interaction screens. These screens, let me explain them. It's a big screen, interactive, which is used to connect school to school, teacher to teacher, learner to learner, education officer to teachers. Meaning, an education officer can sit at an office, in the regional office, but give a continuous professional development course to all the other AS teachers in Namibia. This is how, how, how we, we are trying to improve on the quality of teaching and learning. These are additional now, meaning now the 41 that we are buying are additional to 85 interactive screens which we rolled out already in 2021. This investment is specifically designated for the 41 newly identified advanced subsidiary level schools. Reporting for Primetime News, Diana Kauta. Moving to the Kavango East region. The Rundu Town Council expressed its commitment to achieving a level comparable to the Ongwediva trade fair in the coming years. The council is urging companies in the Kavango regions and throughout Namibia to support the growth of the Rundu trade fair through their corporate social responsibilities. Now let's listen in. Um, lastly, we, we are really grateful for those that have come to participate. We are looking forward, as I indicated earlier, to improving our arrangements better uh, so that we create the environment suitable for the exhibitors. Um, our trade fair center is, is big enough for us to accommodate as many people as possible, especially on the outside. This, it, it is so spacious that we can accommodate more people. And um, what we are calling upon is just the support from um, companies that are there, that are out there, through their corporate social responsibilities to support the Rundu Town Council because we also want to grow and, and be better. We want to, you know, um, be on the level as Ongwediva Trade Fair. We know that that one is bigger. They've celebrated their 10th year of existence. When we get to our 10th year, we also want to be on par, if uh, maybe closer, if not closer to what Ongwediva Trade Fair is doing. So the Rundu Town Council is, uh, the Rundu Trade Fair Organizing Committee is really striving for us to achieve um, in terms of organizing a better trade fair, creating a better environment for the people that want to come and exhibit and also to create a platform for those that do not know that there are things like this that happens in the Kavango East region so that every year they also then know that they need to start preparing that this time around there is such a, a trade fair being hosted by the Rundu Town Council so that everybody can come and participate and can come and visit and also get some services being rendered by the various institutions and those that are exhibiting here. Thank you. Next up is your weather forecast followed by a roundup of the latest economic news.
Welcome to Sport Planet, your premier destination for all things sports. We kick off with Africa World Cup qualifiers news. Liverpool star Mohamed Salah showcased his prowess by scoring four goals as Egypt trounced Djibouti 6-0 on Thursday. After reaching the 200-goal mark in English football last Sunday, Salah netted twice in each half of a Group A match day one romp in Cairo. Mustafa Mohamed and Trezeguet also contributed to the scoring. Djibouti, ranked 154 places below Egypt, survived for only 17 minutes before a low cross eluded two defenders and Salah fired into the net at the far post. The Las Vegas Grand Prix faced an embarrassing setback on its first night as the opening practice on the new circuit was abruptly abandoned after just nine minutes on Thursday due to a loose drain cover. Carlos Sainz, driving his Ferrari, came to a halt after hitting the loose cover, prompting a red flag and causing damage to the front of his car. This incident occurred on what was anticipated to be a triumphant return for F1 to Vegas after two races in 1981 and 1982. Video footage captured sparks flying from the bottom of Sainz's car following the impact with what organizers referred to as a water valve cover. After a delay, organizers announced that the session would not be resumed. Stay tuned for your sports roundup. And with that, we conclude tonight's broadcast. Join us again next week for primetime news and be sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on events both at home and abroad. Until then, I'm Selima Shimwefeleni Masipa along with our dedicated production team wishing you a peaceful weekend. Good night. <music>